Well, as I said, we're kind of reprising the program um, that technical issues caused problems with yesterday. And we had lined up to talk to, and it's still just as relevant today, the newly minted mayor of um, uh, Nelson, um, Nick Smith, and he joins us on the line now. Nick, um, congratulations. Welcome back on the platform. Oh, oh, wonderful to be on the platform. Good to be talking to you, Sean. Uh, worried that you've got the, the dreaded uh, COVID lurk, uh, but know that with your uh, stamina, you'll, you'll, you'll fight it off. Please to be on the program. <laughs> Well, I, look, I, I, I hope I get through it. It seems to be going. It's not, not pleasant, but it's all right. Look, um, pretty stunning result for you uh, in Nelson. And with perhaps the exception of Wellington, part of a national trend or a nationwide trend, I guess towards the right of the political uh, spectrum, um, though local body competitions are and candidates are very varied and and quite granular in terms of the issues that people vote for. Uh, Do you think you rode that wave, and were you surprised by that? Would would you agree, A, that that has been the trend? Are you surprised by it? Oh, there's no question that the local election results on Saturday was a seismic shift. Uh, And we've seen it before uh, in political history in New Zealand, where whether it's been a national government and there's been a raft of uh, left-leaning or Labour mayors, uh, that is the sort of uh, first signal of change. And the other way round, uh, during uh, Helen Clark's period as Prime Minister, when a number of mayoralties switched the other way, uh, you do have to look at the local factors in each community. But the bit that is uniform is that New Zealanders are under real economic pressure and are turning back to the sort of bread and butter issues of the size of their rates, the delivery of services, the impact of cost of living types of questions are right hot on their mind. And the New Zealand public uh, right across New Zealand, including in Nelson, wanted to have uh, local government representation that was going to be very careful with their money when both business and households are under so much pressure. I do think Wellington uh, is clearly the the exception to that. And you do have to look specifically at some areas, and Nelson particularly. There was quite an issue with a dysfunctional council, and so there was a real mood change for wanting some experienced governance. Uh, There was also, of course, the strong overlay of the floods and storms, which is one of my biggest challenges uh, over this council term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Nick, that's right. What was turnout like in your neck of the woods? It was, 50, it was 51% in Nelson, which is about the same as what it was uh, three years ago in 2019. That's pretty good. Look at the national yeah, it was figures. One of the high, high yeah, two things going on there. One is that I think the when you've got a hotly contested, high-profile sort of mayoral contest, People take more interest and are more likely to vote. But the other part was the previous council had made a decision to switch to STV for the first time, where Nelson's always previously voted by tick, uh, and that did turn some voters off. There is a, a, a nationwide discussion and debate that needs to be had about how we conduct those local elections. I've had the view for a long time including when I was a parliamentarian on the last Select Committee inquiry, that we should be uh, transferring responsibility over to the Electoral Commission, letting them run all of the elections through the country. Uh, The reason for that is, firstly, if you take my community, uh, you had Tasman District and Nelson City using different voting systems. So the voters in Nelson were listening to ads on the radio (laughs) telling them boxes when I meet a ranking, or vice versa. It just created confusion. There isn't, you Crazy. know, when we have the general election, there's that really effective uh, little orange man telling us all to vote. The other part is the Electoral Commission has done a really good job of making it very easy to vote in general elections. You know, all the booths at the thick supermarkets, most people yeah. voting early in that two-week period. You've got the yeah. Electoral Commission, a massive bureaucracy already set up all over the country. We made the switch around 20 years ago where we actually used to maintain separate electoral rolls. You know, a local electoral roll was run by the yeah. council and a separate one was run for the parliamentary. We quite sensibly made the decision just to run one some years ago. 
with ratepayers yeah. and taxpayers under financial pressure, we also need to be looking at that. And then the other part for me is the is the issue of being absolutely sure about the integrity. There are these people that out there think that the answer is to move over to internet voting. It just internationally and in New Zealand, you've got to have that paper trail to be able to maintain the integrity results. Yeah. We all know the sort of hacking disasters that are going on. We have been yeah. toying with moving Why over to internet voting for Why three would years. That- why would someone in St. Petersburg bother hacking a polling booth in the Mai Tai Valley, Nick? No, the, the issue is not just them. Or the, the, from that perspective, it's just one of disruption. But my view is that we've been toying with the idea of shifting local voting onto the internet uh, for 20 yeah. years. It's a non-starter. Forget it. Yeah. Post has become snail, snail mail. That is disrupting the, the, the effectiveness of the local elections. You've actually got a pretty good system run by the Electoral Commission that delivers some of the yeah. highest voter participation in the, in the world. Why do we just not piggyback local elections onto that? Yeah, and I think actually having a voting day, Nick, as well. Postal yeah, and have a voting day. Yeah, but if you look at the... Uh, yeah, I think there's a, there's a really good point you're making there, Sean. But the other bit for me is is the convenience. Everybody goes to the supermarket about once a week. The huge numbers of shifts that's occurred in the parliamentary elections where people at the malls and the shopping centres are doing the pre-voting over a period of two weeks. But here's the other bit, Sean, mm. that some of the nerds that get into, you know, electoral system design don't quite get. And that is, yep. you know... I don't know whether you remember as a kid, Sean, but, you know, mum and dad hop off to vote on the voting day and it's all very exciting. And we all sit around the telly in the evening and watch the results come through and a sense of excitement and results, you know, with the results sort of dribbling through in a messy way, actually not having that sort of uh, crystallised event actually takes away the interest and actually adversely... Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. That's why I still think having a voting day is a good thing it um, more secures something in a culture if you have a focus or an event focus on it um, because it would seem to me that, that we do compromise for convenience of voting the actual excitement, the act of voting itself, which is a, you know, a privilege that many people in the world do not have and are not allowed to exercise. So I think we should make a song and dance of it and have a kind of day out for it. Yeah, well, you've got every single community doing it differently across your 76 councils. So some results come out one day, some come out differently. Yeah. And, and they are all the things that take away from that event and that excitement that you rightly identify as one of the things yeah. that actually can help participation. So there's some work to do. They're really issues for central government. Yeah. Uh, but we're doing, and, uh, and obviously have um, met with the chief executive uh, of the Nelson City Council, uh, got straight under work on Sunday morning. That's one of the issues that, that we're looking at as we locally look at reviewing it. I'm hoping within local government New Zealand there is the mood for a shift because I think it is only going to get worse with snail mail becoming less and less significant yes. in society. Yeah. Look, Nick, the other thing, um, we look at the, the councils, and once again, Wellington, the exception, um, a rejection of three waters, which the government still seems that it's going to go ahead with. Does that issue now well, come to a head after these local government elections? Well, I can't believe the political management within the beehive that would have such a contentious issue involving local government. This, this is talking about an issue that is a third of the assets of most councils. So for Nelson City, yep. those water assets are worth about $630 million, uh, if you take their, their value. So it's about a third of what the city owns. Now, why would you and your political management have an issue that effectively takes away control of a third of what council does going in the middle of a local election? You know, where was the management around that? Then the second issue is you cannot make that scale of change to local government without it having a huge impact on the structure of local government as well as the changes that are going on with the planning and the RMA. It's just all disconnected. Uh, and so very messy. Uh, my view, and I look, I've been out on the hustings for the last 10 weeks. There is a palpable anger 
in the public around the issue of three waters. Uh, it is like provincial New Zealand, where the current government did so well in those centres at the last election. The mood is one of, um, this is Wellington saying we can't run our own affairs. That, that, that you know, trust Wellington, uh, sort of a, a, yes. of a philosophy, and that is really starting to rebound. And if you hear the messages of many of the newly elected mayors, the results at the weekend were a real reaction against centralisation. Mm. And I, I wonder too, Nick, and to know yeah. best. Yeah, I wonder too, Nick, in context whether or not yesterday's announcement of new emissions taxes for our agricultural sector, which is the most carbon efficient agricultural sector in the world, if that doesn't feed into the three waters concern as well, once again in those provincial areas. My uh, community of Nelson is, is predominantly urban. I don't have a large farming constituency, so in don't uh, feel uh, for Nelson City, uh, the issue around the ETS and agriculture is not going to be a big issue, but you should talk to some of those mayors and farming and uh, uh, agricultural areas uh, who will have a view on that. My view is that uh, Three Waters is going to become a real uh, issue of tension uh, between central and local government. My hope uh, is that the Beehive realises uh, that for any change to be sustainable, that it needs to do a rethink and re-engage with the local government sector. I'm really keen, as the Mayor of Nelson, to engage with them to get a solution that'll work long term. I pre would much prefer it didn't become one of those uh, polarised issues in which we fail to make progress, because there is a need for New Zealand to improve its water management, and particularly for councils, and there are solutions that would work uh, better uh, if the government were prepared to listen. I hear you. Hey, Nick, thank you for your time. Sorry about the delay from yesterday. No uh, problem. You look after yourself control. with COVID. Best wish, best wish <coughs> with platform. Yeah. Keep the debate going. Good on and, you. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll be looking forward to further engagement. Uh, I'll pop down and see you soon. That is uh, Nick Smith, the um, new mayor of Nelson, of course, former uh, National Party cabinet minister, a long-term parliamentarian, sucker for punishment, I'd say, because he's back into politics, having had a little bit of break, what, a couple of years break. I work as an engineer, actually, on erecting um, massive wind turbines around the country because he's got a doctorate in engineering, like practical engineering. Interesting that. So he says he reckons Three Waters is going to kick off and that part of the local body election trend was anti-Three Waters. Uh, Tori Farnow, the new mayor of Wellington, who we might get on next week, um, she's pro Three Waters. Um, and 51% turnout. Well done, Nelson. I must get a final count for Hutt Valley where I know that Wayne Guppy was re-elected as mayor, but I know that people were talking about the Hutt Valley in general having a very low turnout in its local body elections.